بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم دستور مزرد صاحب و سیب شدم تو سیرا بری مدد نایت والی هست حضم الله تاریکا تنصاف فی الحیر من جمعیت بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم We are asking always support and light from the Holy Ones and their blessings to come to us so that we can navigate in this very dark days of this Ahir Zaman to hold on to our faith properly and to live our faith not to have just a religion that is private, that is shameful, that we are apologetic for, but to make that to be part of our lifestyle as the Holy Prophet ﷺ had taught and his Sahabis and Tabi Tabi'in continuing for 1400 years. We are asking for that kind of light from them. Inshallah, what is necessary, they will send. This is a sohbet. Our tariqat is based on association, and goodness comes from that association. This is what the peer of our tariqat, Shah Naqshbandi, had said. This is what every grand shaykh they are continuing, and every shaykh they are continuing to try to give sohbet as protection as nutrition to give our spiritual body life to continue in this way there's no sohbet you cannot have Islam because Prophet he came to give sohbet he didn't come to give classes he gave sohbet there's no classes this is not a class you ever see me coming with books you ever see me preparing reading and coming here and referring and speaking. No. What we're trying to get is something from them, from their hearts. Empty your hearts and they will send it to your heart. How are you going to empty your heart? This is what this tariqat is teaching. How to empty your heart. First look at it. Where is the heart? Holy Prophet had said, there is an organ in your body, and he showed his fist like this, as big as your fist. If it is good, your whole body will be good. If it is bad, your whole body will be bad. And this is your heart. The zikr polishes the heart. It rusts over. Allah will look only to your heart. He's not going to look at anything else. You can make a show to the whole world how good you are. But if your heart it is still filled with dirtiness, what kind of dirtiness we're talking about in Tariqat? Holy Prophet had said, if you have an ounce of arrogance, Jannat is forbidden to you. How many of us are free from arrogance? None. We're not, not you, not me. So tariqat is to look into your heart and to remove the dirtiness before we start polishing it. You understand? How are you going to polish something if it's dirty? Correct or not? The sohbat will make us to look into our heart Take it in and understand what is the dirtiness that is there and to take it out. Whatever that is necessary, they will send. Whatever that is necessary, we will take and this will be enough guidance for us. Yes, until Judgment Day. To take it and to live according to it. Not like a donkey these days, people are just taking knowledge, taking knowledge and taking knowledge and not living that knowledge, not experiencing. That is not knowledge. We want the best kind of knowledge. And the best kind of knowledge, Holy Prophet ﷺ had said, is the knowledge that you experience. That is the best kind of knowledge. 
In fact, there's a curse of Allah on those ones who collect the knowledge that is not meant for them, that is not beneficial for them, that is not for them. So to know what kind of knowledge is for you, that is ma'rifat in these days. Because everybody thinks every kind of knowledge is for them. Awam doesn't know, Ahli Tariqat doesn't know, Murids they don't know. Murids they have a shaykh, the shaykh is pouring from uh, the pure spring, these ones pouring, and the shaykh is giving everything, and the Murids, I, I don't like this water, I like this other water. They go somewhere else to drink, they go somewhere else to drink, they go somewhere else to drink. Then they get sick. Physically and otherwise, they start being, they get very weak. Things start crashing down, then they say, pray for us. I said, of course, I'm going to pray for you, but do you know how you got sick? Me? Sick? If you don't know you're sick, how are you going to be cured? Will you listen if I were to tell you that you're sick from this and this? Of course, you're going to listen if our voice is nice. But will you listen when we scream and when we shout at you? No, I don't like it. Ego. Murid still having ego. Speak nicely to me, I will listen to you. When you see the danger approaching someone whom you love, you're not going to take your time, you're not going to take your nice sweet voice to warn that one away from that danger. You will scream, you will shout, you will say, get out, watch out. But Muritz are still stuck. Appearances. The outside form, they're not understanding what is behind that. That is a problem. That is a problem of trust and of submission. Because how many times have we heard this? We've heard this so many times. How many times have we heard the story of the man who was sleeping and the snake went into his body and the man, another man in a horseback rushing to him, seeing the snake going inside. But this man is sleeping, he doesn't know, he runs. And he beats him up, makes him to run to eat rotten apples, runs again, whips him. This man saying, why are you doing this to me? Stop hurting me. This man on the horseback doesn't care. Whip him, he runs until he throws up the rotten apples. And with the snake, and that man running to the one on the horseback, kissing his hand and saying, who are you, an angel? Are you a, a saint? You saved my life. We heard this story so many times, but when it actually happens to a murid, suddenly we forget all sohbet. No, 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 that's different. That's just a story, nice story for you to tell. And so that we hear and we get spiritual for 5, 10, 15 minutes of the sohbet, but you're not applying it in the life. Don't you understand? I wish our Shaykh is here to scream at me. When they don't scream at you, and you are sick, when they just smile, when they turn their head, that is a time we should worry. We should not worry when they're yelling at us. But Muri has become very spoiled. This is what has happened. I'm never going to change. Why are you in Tarikat? That is shaitan. Shaitan saying what? I'm never going to change. But what does Maulana say? I was a mineral. Then I changed. And I became a vegetable. Then I changed. And I became an animal. Then I changed. And I became a human. And I changed. He used a much heavier word than change. We are afraid to change. But Maulana is saying, 
I died. What is the most severest form of change if it's not die? The one who says, I cannot change, that means you don't want to die. Why are you in tariqat if you don't want to die? We have a choice. We will die. And Holy Prophet is saying, die before you die. This is the way how you're going to die before you die. And Mulana Rumi is saying, what do I have of this fear? Why should I fear change and death? Because that changing is still. That changing, it is infinite. It goes on and on and on. There is no limit to that. Change to become better, change to come nearer, change to become nearer. So we are here, in this way. So that's not just interesting things that we're listening. Hmm, very interesting. Hmm, no. Shri Afendi used the word ammunition. He's saying when shaitan comes to attack you, your ego comes to attack you, we give you the ammunition. Now go and defend yourself against the shaitan. If you don't, if the time that when you need it and you drop everything, you come back to yourself and you say, I cannot change. So many of us were saying that. I am like this, I cannot change. You're going to die, you will change. Angels will make you change. In the grave. Then that changing is also continuous. We must change. Because this is our lower selves. In this lowest of the lowest world. We have to change. If not, we're going to get stuck in this asfala safilin. If we don't change now, they will put us in the fire to make us change. The fire, not just for punishment, it is to make us to change. It will get rid of all the impurities until only the purity is left. That's the time we'll be ready to go to our home. Jannat that is promised to us that we are from. I don't want to change. Shaitan is saying, I don't want to change. Even after knowing that he is wrong, he doesn't want to change. So we know that story of that one. We know the story also, Sheriff Andy is saying, let me remind you. I'm not giving so, but I'm just reminding you. It doesn't matter what comes from you, whether it is a rose or a thorn of a rose, because it comes from you, it is the same. We know that. And when the Shaykh gives the rose, we get so happy. When he gives the thorn, suddenly we get so upset. And we say, you don't understand me. Always we are wrong. You are right. That's why we say, as you like. This is a reminder for you and for me. Whatever I've said, I've experienced. That's why I can say. If you think it fits to you, take it. If you think it doesn't fit to you, saying, I'm above all of this, leave it. I will take it. I need the blessings. But we are here, yes, to clean ourselves. We didn't even come close to understanding what adab is. The adab that you have oh, with each other or with the shaykh. Hmm. Let me give you one example, the adab of tariqat. If the shaykh says, for example, sit down. You don't say, inshallah I will sit down. You understand? We're not saying this wrong, 
But here we're moving on to the subtlety. If you don't understand this, learn. It is in you. Faith is in you. You say, I cannot. That is stubbornness and that is coming from shaitan. Because was shaitan capable of knowing who Adam salam was? Of course he is. If you claim you are more ignorant than shaitan, then you become, you make shaitan happy that time. Shaitan knew who Adam salam was. He says, but he's insisting, being stubborn, I cannot change. It came to the time that when Musa salam was going up to the mountain of Tur and he saw shaitan at the foot of the mountain and shaitan is saying to Musa alayhi salam saying, Ya Musa, your Lord, how proud he is, your Lord, he is most unjust, Hasha, astaghfirullah. And Musa alayhi salam is saying, Yinnailun. Why are you saying that? He is most just. He says, no, because Adam alayhi salam, he didn't say alayhi salam, of course. He hates Adam alayhi salam. By extension, he hates us. Because that Maqam al-Mahmud is for the Holy Prophet alayhi salam, especially the people of the Ahir Zaman. Oh, he has a special hatred towards us. He said, because Adam, he committed a wrong thing and your Lord forgave him. I commit a wrong thing and your Lord did not forgive me. We've heard this before, but we're not putting in our lives. Then what is it for? Musa salam thought about it and he couldn't think of a good answer. He went up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the knower of what is in the hearts and the breasts of men, saying, say to me what is troubling you, Ya Musa. It is known to you, Ya Rabbi. He said this, that you are unjust, that you forgive Adam salam, when he committed the wrong, but you did not forgive him when he committed the wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to him, Ya Musa, that is all that he's asking. Say to him, my Lord is most forgiving. Say to him, you know where is the tomb of Adam, where he is buried. Go to his tomb and make one sujood, one sajda to him and I will forgive him. Everything that he has done from that time until your time, every wrong thing, every evil thing, every waswasa that he made the sons of Adam to commit, I will forgive. If he just goes there to make one sajda to Adam salam, where he was buried, Musa alayhi salam came back. Shaitan asked him, Musa alayhi salam says, My Lord is most just. He says for you to go to Adam alayhi salam's tomb, make one sujood, and he will forgive you. And Shaitan laughed. He laughed. Showing that stubbornness and that arrogance, I didn't make sajda to him when he is alive. He wants me to make sujood to his dead bones. Shaitan became more shaitan then. We have that. If we are not looking into our hearts and to find out what are the hundreds and thousands of ways that we are arrogant and we're stubborn if we are not getting rid of it, if we are not in the presence of our shaykh, in the presence of others who are showing that this is arrogance, this is stubbornness, this is anger, this is envy, get rid of it. If we are showing more stubbornness to that, as in Israel, We must prepare now to learn it from the hard way. Because that is the easy way. Especially when they're yelling at you, it's easy. Now you must learn how to get rid of it from the hard way. We should not be arrogant and stubborn. The Shay, he is not your buddy. He is not your friend. 
He is not your husband. He is not your father. He is everything and nothing. And when he is that to you, he comes down to our level. That is not his level. Our mistake will be to think that he is that and only that. And when you get too close, you, know, you get too stubborn and you pass your limits, you should pull back. We should understand. Otherwise, like I said, if we don't learn it the easy way, we're going to learn the hard way. But we have to learn. Because our return is to Allah. And if we go into that grave, still not fixing ourselves from all the stubbornness and the arrogance, envy, and the anger that we have, only the fire is going to fix us. That fire is real. This is what Tariqat is. To make us to pass to that next world as a good servant. One day I will go back to your question. I was going to redirect me somewhere else. Do you understand? Inshallah. May Allah forgive me and bless you. Al-Fatiha.